All right, from uh, time to time, I have pe uh, viewers ask me about this magnifier that I use, and uh, it is my favorite magnifier. Now, this was actually removed from a big camera lens. So remember when everybody was getting rid of their camcorders, the big VHF camcorders, they were just throwing them into the trash. And uh, whenever I found one, I would uh, tear the lens off of it, which wasn't good for anything else, but inside of the lens, I could salvage pieces of the lens. And this was an internal element in, in one of those zoom lenses on one of those big camcorders. And this one just has a really nice working distance. And I just, I just like this one. And, and it's, uh, it's very thin, so you get an image from edge to edge with nothing in the way. So this is just as is pulled out of an old, of an old lens. Now this one was also pulled out of a lens. This was the, the front element of one of these lenses. This is is like the one of the middle elements. This is like the front the front lens, and this one makes a good a, a good magnifier as well. So if you find any old cameras, you know, tear them apart and, and just kind of look and figure out which lenses work and which lenses don't. And sometimes you get lucky and you find a really nice one. Okay, so if you're not lucky or you just want to buy something, um, there are some magnifiers that uh, I wanted to recommend, but they're no longer manufactured. Um, Let's take a look at this one first. Uh, this one may still be manufactured. So this is an Edmund Scientific uh, magnifier, and it has a stand and everything. You know, it's kind of like for, uh, uh, I don't know, stamp collecting or something. I don't know, a big, a big, a big stand and, and a focuser and stuff. Now, these are not cheap. These are several hundred dollars. Uh, so that's probably out of the right price range of most people. Uh, you can find them used once in a while on eBay if you know what you're looking for and you get lucky. That's where I got this one. Uh, but the, the, the magnifier that I wanted to recommend was this one. And um, this one also is in Edmunds uh, Scientific or Edmunds Optic. I think the company kind of has two branches. And uh, this is a great little magnifier. It's a times five magnifier. It ha it's pretty powerful. And um, you don't want to get a big one. You don't want a times 10 magnifier. That's just too much. Somewhere between five times five and somewhere between times four and times seven. That's kind of the sweet spot for little handheld magnifiers. Okay. And this is a times five and it was just my favorite magnifier. Now I found these, I don't know, 20 years ago and I was working at uh, HP labs and um, I, I, I bought a couple of these cause they were very, very useful. And um, they would, they would continually disappear off my desk. They would just, they would just vanish. And at first I was really mad. They're like somebody stole my stupid magnifier, right? They'd come by my desk and ask me a question. And then they would like, I'd show them with the magnifier and they would like walk away with it or something. I don't know. Anyway, they kept disappearing. So at first I got really mad. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, everybody likes these things. So I, I'm just going to go ahead and buy them, right? It's the company's money. So I would just buy them a dozen at a time and let people steal them. Or when somebody comes by and they say, hey, it's a really cool magnifier. So here, you want one? <laughs> um, and unfortunately, they don't, they don't make these anymore. I, I don't know why. They have a, a nice little rubber uh, grabby here, thing here and they're black anodizing and everything. They, they, they were just really nice. The, the size fits the hand and everything. They're just really, really cool. This is the one that I wanted to recommend to everybody to go buy, but like I said, they don't make them anymore. So I thought, well, what can I do instead? Now, uh, I, I, I went ahead and did an experiment. Um, there's a company called Surplus Shed. It's kind of, kind of hard to see, but Surplus Shed is uh, online and it is an optic surplus store. So, you know, you go to electronic surplus stores and mechanical surplus stores or whatever. This is an optic surplus store. And in fact, it continues to hold the old Wallensack name. When you, when you place a purchase, it's actually billed by the Wallensack company, which is from the 1800s. Um, anyway, uh, I ordered a couple things and uh, we'll go through them. One of them is only $4.80. And one of them was $7.50. So we'll take a look at those two first, okay? And uh, so what am I going to, what am I going to be showing you, okay? Uh, let me find a pen here. Okay, what does, it, what does it take to make a magnifier, right? Well, you could say, okay, I just need a lens, right? So I'm just going to have a hunk of glass. And, uh, and this hunk of glass uh, brings in the, so here's, uh, here's somebody's eye, right? And so you're you're looking this way, and uh, you're you're looking, and then and then the light gets focused over here, right? And so that's kind of what you want. But a simple single piece of glass 
doesn't make the best image quality. You want two pieces of glass or three pieces of glass or things like that. You know, the more elements in the lens, the better, right? So in magnifiers, what you can do is you can get something that's called an achromat. And an achromat looks like this. And it's two pieces of glass that are glued together, okay? And if you take a look at it, it's like having one positive lens and one negative lens sandwiched together. And the reason that you do that, so this is called an achromat, uh, and it stands for achromatic. It, 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 it solves any chromatic problems, any color problems. So this lens, um, blue light's going to be focused closer than red light. Red light's going to come out further and blue light's going to get focused in closer. And you'll see color fringing. You'll see little rainbows and all kinds of artifacts, especially near the edge of the image and stuff. And this thing fixes all of that. And the way it does is that it uses two different pieces of glass. It uses a crown and a flint. Um, one has high dispersion, one has low dispersion, one has high power, one has low power, or actually negative power. And by adding those together, you can cancel out any color problems. So you want achromats, okay? And these tend to be very expensive, right? Because it's two pieces of glass made out of different materials. And the trick is, even though one has a high dispersion, one has a low dispersion, I'm not going to explain that right now, but that's, that's, that's this problem is um, blue light gets focused differently than red light, okay? That's just the energy of the photon. Um, you pick... Let's say this has an index, uh, uh, index of 1.5. Well, you choose this glass to also have an index of 1.5. And when you glue them together, it looks like you just have one lens of index 1.5. You say, well, that's not going to do me any good. Why don't I just use one piece of glass? Ah, but one has low dispersion and one has high dispersion. And you put those together and they magically make an achromat. Anyway, go look it up on Google. Look about achromats. They're very cool. All right, so I, I, I bought two achromats, which I, which I thought would make good which I thought would make good magnifiers. So let's take a look at the first one. It's, uh, it's this one, all right? This one I paid $4.80 for. And it's a quite, quite a large lens. And you might be able to see the glue there holding two pieces of glass together. It's a little, you can see the seam here in on the on the edge but uh yeah it makes a it makes a very very nice magnifier so i actually really really like this it's, it's nice and big and uh it's ready to go you don't have to do anything <laughs> it, it is a magnifier now you could go if you have a machine shop, you could you could you can make a ring for this, and you could mount it inside a ring and stuff. I've done that with other things. I made a magnifier for my wife, um, M. Segal. Anyway, uh, yeah. So this one is very very nice, and it focuses at working distance. Uh, you know, it's about yay big, right? So very very good. So this is highly recommended. Okay, so this is part number L one zero eight zero seven. One zero eight zero seven, four dollars and eighty cents. That's just a screaming deal for an acre mat the size. That's just a screaming deal. It's unbelievably cheap. Uh, optics is super expensive. Uh, you know that's 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 a hundred dollar lens for sure at Edmonds. Okay, so the other lens that I thought would make a good magnifier was the L sixteen thirty two. So here's the L sixteen thirty two. Let's take a look at that one. Uh, a little bit smaller in diameter, uh, a good size though, uh, you know, uh, in, in the right range of, of nice in the hand. And uh, let's take a look at that. Now, it does not have as much magnification. It has a little bit longer focal length. Um, so, uh, but very, very clear, very, very nice looking, very, very nice looking lens. I think these actually have coatings on them as well, which is just a screaming deal. Anyway, uh, I think I like, I think I like this one better. Um, but it is a little bit larger and heavier, uh, and uh, depending on what you're trying to magnify, this one might just be fine. Um, 
the other, so anyway, so that's my kind of my hint for the day. If you want to buy a nice magnifier, just buy a lens and, and uh, be done with it. And these are super, super cheap. Uh, uh, Surplus Chat is not a sponsor. I paid money for these. Um, the other one that I bought just for fun, because I knew what it was, and these are quite expensive if you had to go buy one of these. And um, a lot of the little jewelers magnifiers, if you get a super, super good one, instead of having two pieces of glass, they actually have three pieces of glass. They're called the Hastings triplet. They have a positive, negative, and a positive. And they're very high power. They use it like a 10x uh, uh, magnifier. And um, there's a really nice one made in Belarus. Um, I, I don't know the name of it, Lomo, Lomo something. Anyway, there's, there's a, a Belarusian company that, that makes a, a super, super good Hastings triplet. Now the Hastings triplet end up being small because you have these three pieces of glass. And, and so getting a nice big Hastings triplet is expensive. Uh, and this is actually quite a large one. Um, yeah, this one is quite a large one. I think this is probably pretty close to that uh, that Belarusian one that I'm thinking of, um, and you can you can just barely see maybe the the three I mean the two different glue lines with the three different pieces of glass. Um, so anyway, this one should be a very very uh, high magnification, and they're also chromatically. Uh, chromatically accurate and stuff. So uh, the problem with these is you actually have to get your eye pretty close to use them. Uh, so most of the time I don't like these things because it's kind of like a jeweler's thing where you've got your eye and the work all really, really close together and things just get in the way. So uh, I, I usually don't use these things, but if you're, if you want to look like a, a, a really close detail, at, at, at something and you want a really high magnification. This doesn't really show it in the, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, camera here, but you can get a really high magnification with these things and um, probably like 10X. Um, and yeah, so anyway, that one, that one is the 4,700, that was $9. That's the most expensive thing I bought. So this was this was nine bucks because it's three pieces of glass. But at nine, at nine dollars, that's just ridiculous. Go price out Hasting Hasting triplets, and uh, and you'll know what I mean. Um, so yeah, there's my uh, there's my tip for the day: optical magnifiers. Uh, go buy them on the used market, and uh, buy just the lens and build your own housing. And yeah, pretty cool. Surplus shed.